Hi, I'm Don, and today what we're going to do is we're going to swap out this propeller uh, for a stainless steel propeller. A stainless steel propeller will give you a little bit more performance than the aluminum propeller, uh, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so back at the swim platform, what I've done is I've assembled all the materials that I'm going to be using today, and I'll just go through them with you. So here we have the propeller. It's a stiletto propeller. It's got a solid hub as opposed to the Flowtorque 2 system. I don't know if you can see that so well in there. You can see that you can get a view right through there. On the back side we have the uh, solid hub on the inside. You can see the splines on the back there or the, uh, the threads that's going to fit onto the splines of the prop. And here we have the notches where the uh, propeller nut tab washer are going to lock into. As I mentioned, I have a new propeller nut and tab washer. Basically, that goes inside there, and we have some nice new uh, threads to seal onto the prop shaft. The prop wrench I have is one of the floatable prop wrenches. In order to keep the uh, prop shaft well lubricated and the propeller performing properly, we're going to use some of this uh, Quicksilver 2.4C. So before I go start turning on the prop, I want to make sure that there's no chance that the motor's going to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside the boat and I'm going to trip the kill switch uh, just in case. So here we have our original prop that we're going to remove. You can see that the uh, tab washer is locked into these uh, grooves here. Uh, they've got it locked into three positions, which is what you're looking for. I'm just going to use some pliers and bend those out of there. Don't got to go too far, just got to get the tabs clear of the neck down below. As you can see, I've wedged a block of wood into here between the propeller and the anti-cavitation plate to prevent it from uh, spinning. Uh, once again, also, I've activated the kill switch inside the boat. Uh, then I'm going to get the prop wrench on here. For those of you who forget the old term, it's uh, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Here we go. You can see once you get it, the uh, initial uh, loosening done, you can hold the prop with your hand while you're doing that. Another method you can do once it's loose enough is you turn the propeller while you're holding the wrench still. You could even brace it against the anti-cavitation plate for a little extra support. And just keep turning that until your nut's free or you can get it by hand. There you go. There comes your tab washer right after. So now to get the prop off, I'm going to get a grip on the blades and pull off. And you can see that came off quite nicely. You can see some of the lube is left on here. And here's my aft thrust or uh, my thrust washer, which I shouldn't have to replace. You can see inside there's some lube. This is a flow torque two system. You can see there's an inner device here that slides into a plastic sleeve. So now before I put on the new prop, what I'm going to do is going to clean off the prop shaft and all these splines and uh, make it nice and ready for the new prop, uh, remove any gunk that might have accumulated there. And I'll spin the prop shaft, make sure it's turning nice and true. Okay, I've roughly cleaned off these splines. Now I'm going to fit the replacement prop and check for my clearances on that trim tab anode. flips on and I can turn it. Oh. So as you can see the thing we were uh, told about and warned about is that this prop could come into contact with the trim tab anode. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to take a file, a uh, Dremel tool, whatever, and I'm going to shave this back. Uh, like I mentioned there are offset trim tab anodes available from your uh, marine supply retailer. So what I'm going to do to notch this out is I'm going to take the trim tab anode down a little bit with a file or sorry, a hacksaw, cut out a little notch, and I'll smooth it off with a file. And it's done. Okay, now we have a small notch. This is what I'll call my rough notch, and what I want to do is put the prop back on and see how that lines up. So as you can see now, we've got the prop lined back up and the prop does spin through that gap. 
So here we go, I got a large rounded file. Uh, you, some of you may not notice I've actually got my foot wedged against the skeg here and I'm sitting in a chair to give me a little support while I do this. Okay, I'm almost done here with the notch. Uh, one thing I did notice, and I'm sure some of you uh, savvy mechanics out there will have already thought of this, is uh, when you're filing something, it's going to create metal filings, which were falling down onto my prop shaft. Uh, I've since covered off that cavity and prop shaft, cleaned it all up, and I'm going to do a double check on that for metal filings. Last thing you want to do is be dropping a bunch of metal filings down onto your prop shaft. Okay, I've got that prop back on there. I've smoothed this all the way around. Uh, I've taken off any burrs so I can safely run my finger down there. And when I turn the prop, you see I've got that clear uh, clearance all the way around on each of the blades. Uh, there you can see as I spin the prop, each of the blades passes through. And it's got the same amount of clearance. Now I'm just going to remove the prop again, make sure the prop shaft is well lubricated, and we'll put this puppy on and take her to the lake. And when I put the prop on, it's going to spread it around a little bit as well. And there we go with the prop back on. Turning and lining up the splines and it'll slide right on. There we go. Next thing that goes in is the continuity uh, washer. It just slips actually on the end of here. And then this whole assembly is going to fit in. You can notice that I've got threads on here and they're going to have to match the threads on the inside there. I just slipped off. little fussing around to get that continuity washer into place. And you can feel when it locks in, uh, it definitely drops in on the, uh, the grooves there. So the first thing you can do here is you can slide your tab washer in. That'll line up with the grooves. Prop nut will go in on top. Okay, once you get that on hand tight, you'll know the threads aren't cross threaded. I've got a little of that marine lubricant under there, helps out. Put my prop wrench on. And again, I can turn the prop against my hand here just to get it started until those uh, Teflon thread uh, locking mechanisms grab on. Okay, once you get it to the end you'll feel it snug up. That's when you're going to have to go to your block of wood. It's again locking the block of wood between the uh, anti-cavitation plate and the prop. And you always pull on a prop, or on a wrench, you never pu push a wrench. That protects your knuckles. If you have a torque wrench, I believe they're saying 55 foot-pounds of torque. We've got a floating wrench here, and then also what you want to do is you want to start thinking about lining up these tab washers with your grooves, because that's what it's going to uh, lock the propeller nut and keep it from spinning off. Okay, I got her good and snug and I've got three of these tabs lined up and I'm going to lock them down. You'll notice the amount of threads that are exposed on the end. If you don't have this much thread, I've got about a oh, quarter to three-eighths an inch. Uh, if you don't have that much, your prop might not be all the way forward. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to push these tabs locking washers forward. First one a little bit more. We're locked in. Spin this prop, spins nice and freely. We're ready to go boating. So there you have it. There's my prop change. Uh, I've got my new stainless steel stiletto prop on there. I'm going to take it out for my lake test. Uh, with the old prop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bag it up and keep it on board. It never hurts to have a spare prop on board your boat. Uh, I will have to return. Uh, inside the boat and turn on the kill switch was the last thing that I did prior to removing this prop. And let's go have some fun. So in summary, here's what we did. You shift into neutral and trip your kill switch. Remove the prop nut and propeller. Clean, inspect, and lube the prop shaft. Replace the prop and aft washer assembly. Install your new prop nut with tab washer. Seat at least three tabs on the tab washer. Reactivate your kill switch and then go boating.